Welcome to Stanford's foothills. Just over the horizon, you'll see a 150-foot dish, what many consider a relic from the 1960s, but it's still very much operational today. The dish is managed by SRI International, a research firm in Menlo Park, California. The firm was known as Stanford Research Institute from its founding in 1946 until about 1970 when student protests at the university resulted in Stanford stopping work with the Department of Defense. The DISH and its work were involved with the Defense Department, and SRI became an independent nonprofit. Here to tell us more about the DISH and its history is SRI International's Jeffrey Casper. Hello, I'm Jeffrey Casper. Um, I work at SRI International. I'm SRI's Director of Applied Technology. We have some beautiful applied technology right here behind me. Um, welcome to the dish. So let me tell you about the origin of the dish. Um, we have to go back to the 1950s and the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. At the time, um, there was a nuclear arms race going on and both, both countries were developing nuclear weapons, they were testing their nuclear weapons, and they were building um, radar systems to detect um, an attack from the other side. And the first antenna for that mission that we built uh, was actually built in Scotland, so it was closer um, to the North Pole. And it was very successful. So we went back to the government and we said, we want to build a copy here at Stanford. The government actually liked it so much that we built a few more. Uh, we built two on the East Coast. Uh, one was built in Massachusetts, one was built in Virginia, um, and one was built in the country of Ethiopia. Now, the ones um, that were in Ethiopia and Scotland no longer exist. But in 1957, there was also the launch of Sputnik by the Soviet Union, which began the space race. So there was the nuclear arms race, and now there's also the space race going on um, in, in the 1960s. And we started getting heavily involved in missions that NASA was um, sponsoring. Um, the, so the Soviet Union got to Venus first, but we were listening to their satellite and all of their radio communications were broken. Um, so we knew that they did a flyby, but they actually got no data from their flyby. Um, and then subsequently, the United States did a flyby with actual communications. So all of the scientists involved in these programs, and I was not an active scientist back then, um, all the scientists um, had that great experience of listening to satellites traveling around the solar system and analyzing the data and some of it obviously turns into political discussions, uh, things like who's winning the race. So if, if we think to um, Apollo 13, uh, the, you know, the famous quote, you know, variation of this, Houston, we have a problem. We're listening to that uh, radio signal and the bounce off of the surface of the, of the moon. I'm gonna jump way ahead um, on NASA to 2018. NASA was sending the InSight lander to the surface of Mars. Along with that satellite, they sent two CubeSats. CubeSats are much smaller satellites and they cost a lot less. A typical CubeSat, um, and the reason why it's called a CubeSat, it's 10 centimeters on a side. It's a cube, about yay big. And um, the ones that were sent to Mars were called 6U CubeSats, they were six times as large. And NASA asked us to check them out after orbit to make sure that they survived the launch. Um, the CubeSats heard our message and sent back a message to NASA's deep space network saying, I've just locked on to InSight. Actually, they locked on to the DISH, but they didn't know that. The DISH also hosted Japanese children who won a 1983 magazine space essay contest run by a university in Japan. The winners were flown to the DISH to transmit messages out to a star that, according to myth, would be reunited with its star-crossed lover on the day of their visit. It also played a critical role in securing a frequency for the US GPS satellite system that would have been lost to China. 
Nowadays, universities and students request SRI internationally use the dish to regain communications with their CubeSats. The, the dish is amazing. Um, you know, I, I love it, but I want to show you my favorite part of the dish. Um, it's this little brush right over here. They're on both sides of, of the wheels. There's three uh, wheels around the dish. And it's just there to keep the track clean as it rotates around uh, the circle. Uh, we want to make sure that um, anything that got on there, um, a pebble, or if somebody decided to put a penny on there because they want to crush it, uh, we don't like doing that. Uh, so we have those little um, low-tech brushes um, keeping the dish operational. So that's, that's, that's my favorite part of this dish. Probably my favorite thing is, is actually the view. Uh, the fact that we have the dish here as an SRI asset um, on Stanford land um, is incredible. Like Jeffrey and his love of the view, many dishgoers' experiences have nothing to do with the 70-ton dish itself. Well, I grew up in Palo Alto, actually in College Terrace, just down the street. And when I was a kid in high school, I think it was my sophomore year, um, it snowed. And we had like inches of snow, maybe four or five inches of snow. And that was in the days when there was no fencing around the dish. There were no paved paths. It was just uh, a couple of uh, unpaved dirt paths. And we got some old, I think it was old plastic wash tubs, or maybe it was even uh, cardboard boxes. And my friends and I hiked up the hill to the top of it from the Stanford Avenue entrance and uh, spent the whole afternoon sledding up and down the hill. It was, um, it was magical. My name is Ivana. My name is Nicole. <laughs> um, this is our first time at the dish, and we thought it was going to be kind of a leisurely stroll. <laughs> but it was not. <laughs> it was a little tough one in the beginning. Um, we were like struggling going up the hill, but, but, we're, but we're here. Yeah, we're doing good now. <laughs> but the other part of it that um, I really love about the dish is that when I meet people and I you know talk to them and they say what do you do if I say well I work with GPS satellites or I do scientific experiments or stuff it's a lot less interesting than I just say do you know the dish at Stanford they go yeah and I go it's mine um, I'm the manager of the site it's not really mine it's <laughs> but that's what I tell people and that, the response is either that's so cool or can I, can I get a tour? Um, on rare occasions, we give tours.